us on track because there's so, so much to talk about here. Um, one question that came up, so one of the things that we recommend in our email series was a, a simple meditation where you just basically imagine yourself in dialogue with the money spirit and ask it, you know, what, how much money it would like you to receive in the near future. Actually, what, what, what it would like you to receive. What it would like you to receive. Okay, what it would like you to receive and what it would like from you in reciprocation, what, what she would like from you in reciprocation. And what was interesting is folks in my um, influence group were posting about how, um, you know, the money spirit appeared variously to them. And one person was talking about, you know, money appeared to me as Beyonce and she was really imperious and I felt like I could never be good enough for her. And like there was this, all this intensity there. And I thought that was a really fascinating point that, um, you know, a lot of when you work with planetary deities or a lot of things um, more solidified in occult traditions, there's very, there's traditional images and associations that go together with those. But money as a spirit is sort of just kind of in the kind of conversation that we're having now and in general global consciousness and in the occult community, it's sort of just kind of bubbling up into self-awareness as a spirit. So there's not really a defined set of images yet. So I just sort of wanted to ask you, Dave, like, what about that? Like, what, what is there there in the way that she appears imaginatively to us individually? Well, I think the, I mean, it's not just the sort of newness of the entry of money into the spiritual magical domain that's the cause of the many, many forms. It's also, there's something fundamentally mercurial <laughs> yeah. about, about, like, Hermes used to be one of the primary associations. Um, and because of its connection to language, there's also this kind of the infinite forms that money can take and the infinite things that can be traded for are connected to the ways that we all experience it individually. But I would say... Broadly, there's like many of the people who, who start out uh, practicing the sorts of meditations that we put forward will experience potentially troubling imagery, um, like a very a very mean, ragged person sometimes appears, often imperiousness. I love the Beyonce imagery, but some kind of like imperious or cold energy, sometimes like a hypermasculine one. So question is, if you're going to develop an intimate relationship with that spirit, how how do you start by work if if your subconscious happens to produce something that isn't particularly appealing and i think there's a couple of there's a couple of angles and ultimately the different practices we'll be doing in the money course can heal some of the things that leads to seeing money in sort of uh, repulsive ways but more importantly it's like money any time that you're entering a relationship with any being say a romantic partner you start out developing intimacy with your projections. That's it. That's all you can really start with. And then over the course of the intimacy developing, there's a kind of gradual unfolding of what you could call the true essence, or at least an evolution of those projections into the kind of shape that make a beautiful partnership possible. And so I would say for, for everyone, but particularly for the people where you're doing a money meditation and she appears to you just brutally in some way, that's awesome. That's that's a sign that there's an incredible amount of intimacy to be opened in that connection. And while there are ancillary practices to help kind of smooth it out, the central practice is just to continue the relationship. Um, and for everyone, I know a lot of people are going to be joining the course with us, but for all the people who don't, especially, like please, please, please continue developing your relationship with money on a personal level. There's no shortcut to money magic to developing an actual long-term personal one-on-one -on -one subjective relationship beautiful so another question that pops up for me when i begin contemplating all of this is um you know so many of the darker sides of money so for example uh right now the amazon rainforests are being clear-cut uh folks are cutting them down so they can plant uh, cacao trees or other kind of cash crops and they're doing it for profit they're doing it for money and it's something that has a damaging impact uh, on the whole ecosystem of the earth right we can think of countless examples of things like that happening so what to me that seems to connect with is this whole thing where what's interesting about money as a specific historical cultural development is that it's a standard unit of economic value you know so many things have economic value diamonds and 
barley and tulips and everything. But when we work with money, we work with a standardized unit. And I read something recently about how when the Greeks first began working with money, I think they got the idea from the uh, Assyrians slash Babylonians. They, um, they were fascinated with it and they were also horrified by this abstracting principle. And, um, you know, the whole legend of King Midas developed, which is, you know, the king wishes that he can touch everything and that everything he touches turns to gold and he touches his beloved daughter and she turns to gold and he's heartbroken. And I think that that story really points to um, one of the scarier things about money, which is like none of us want to be reduced to a number or uh, have value purely quantified. So I guess I just wanted to talk about that, David, what's up with that and all of that kind of destructive, scary stuff that makes me sometimes and people in general feel like, man, I don't know if I want to pursue money or a relationship with the spirit of money. There's all these like dark things there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the primary point of connection that I think it has with language, because all language is a 